What's going on, Garage Gang? Matt from Garage MC here. Guys, today's video, man, we uh, we got the 350X frame and stuff going to powder coat, so gonna have a little bit of downtime, or are we? 1986 TRX 330. I'm gonna show you guys it in a minute and all the parts we got lined up. I'm gonna try and do this video a little different, man. I'm gonna try disassembling that one and getting it all put back together with all the new parts, the new frame and everything. It's getting completely stripped down. Other than the parts that I don't need, I'm going to leave them on that chassis so I have an extra 250R chassis laying around. But let me lay out all this stuff and uh, go over my plans. And let's do this all in one video, man, from start to starting the bike. So start to start. Stay tuned. All right, so I'm gonna lay out everything and get a nice thumbnail and go over all the parts with you guys. But while I have this out and I have a little bit of room to walk, um, so this is an 86 TRX 250R frame, Honda, if you don't know that. Um, this was just recently powder coated by Bonehead Performance Coatings in Pennsylvania. Um, great, great powder coating company, not sponsored. I paid full-blown retail to have all what I had done done. I had them do the frame, motor mounts, uh, this um, lollipop red it's called it's actually a really cool color man it's nice and deep um, I'll get you you know you guys will see it a little better with a little better light when we go out in the sun that's when it really pops so I had the frame and the motor mounts done in this color and I had them do the swing arm in mirror gloss black uh, my 330 has full flight a arms on it and uh, I'm going to powder coat those mirror gloss black now that I have an oven large enough to where I can do that here um, so that's stuff I'm going to take care of off camera and get it prepped. So I'll pull out everything and uh, get, you know, a thumbnail lined up. We'll look at all the parts that I got that we're going to go from, you know, how the bike looks now to when we swap it on this frame. And that's it, man. So, all right, let me get all this dug out. I got to go put, go put these two up from the previous uh, Heads Up Drag Race video. And uh, I'm going to try and do this all in one video, like I said, man. I think there's a couple things that I forgot to order, but, you know, the 330 is still a complete bike, so, you know, if I end up having to put something on there that I gotta swap back out later, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, what I'm gonna do off camera as well, uh, I'm gonna try, try a tip that I learned from Mike Sabo, actually. Well, not actually, it's not hard to believe, you know? I'm sure we've all learned tips from Mike Sabo. Uh, big shout out to Mike Sabo, by the way, if you guys don't watch him on YouTube, which I'm sure you probably do, check him out. Also, he started up a second channel, Michael Sabo Extras, or Michael Sabo Extra is his second channel. So be sure to check that out if you didn't know about that yet. Um, what else? Oh, the tip that you know, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try it his style with getting all my, uh, you know, the threads are already ready to go, man. That's what's good about going to a place like Bonehead Performance that actually specializes in doing, you know, ATV stuff. You're not just going to a place that powder coats like railings and table stands and all kinds of stuff they actually know what to mask off what to you know what to block what not to powder coat all that stuff like you guys can see all the threads i didn't clean those yet they're all individually plugged off and taken care of um however like where the shocks and the a-arm bolts go through the pivot bolt the rear shock mount some powder coat gets in there so you gotta you know um just clean that out of there otherwise the bolt won't go through it'll get stuck uh the mike sabo tip though i'm going to individually you know i already have all my bolts separated but i'm going to get them all in their perspective locations that they go to on the frame just like i started doing here with the upper shock mount and the a arms and you know this way they're just already there and ready to go there's no digging for bolts thanks for the tip mike um let me get this out of the way I run my bolts in from front to back. Uh, I know a lot of people put the rear A-arm one in from the back to the front. Uh, I don't. It really doesn't matter. Uh, my thought behind that is back to front, or I'm sorry, front to back. If for some reason you lose a nut out in the woods, it'll be a lot harder for this bolt to slide out going to the front, obviously, because you're riding a quad that way, than it will for it to just you know fall out the hole. So that's why I do that. I understand a lot of people put it in from the back to the front on the rear one. So I got most of, I think most of everything that I'm switching up from the quad. Let's take a look at the bike real quick as it sits. It had uh, black plastics on it, like old, older school 
uh, Meyer plastics on it in black. Um, probably going to restore them and have them around anyway because I bought graphics for the new white plastics that I have. And I also bought the color scheme to go on the black plastics I have as well. Um, I also got something else for an option too, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. So here's the bike. 1986 TRX 250R. It has a PSI Genesis 330 uh, big bore kit on it. It's power valve setup. Um, that's something I forgot. I got the other rad shroud. I'm not going to run those. I'm going to order different ones. I just haven't made my mind up on which ones yet. So those are just going to have to do for now. Um, full flight A arms. Um, Lone Star steering stem. Lone Star bar riser clamp. Lone Star clamp. Uh, it's got a GPI rad. BDT aluminum foot pegs or billet foot pegs. Mod quad billet stator cover. Pro Design shifter. Uh, UPP case saver. It's got a Kian PWK38. It's got ESR reeds. Uh, ESR TRX 5B pipe. Um, ESR silencer. This stock airbox is not going back on here. Uh, that's actually going to a buddy of mine. He'll probably already have it by the time you guys see this video. Uni filter, uh, stock swing arm, Lone Star axle, stock hubs, front and rear. Uh, it has Team Alba Racing beadlock tires, front and back, the all black. These are brand new, they're just dusty from sitting around. I think I did one ride on this. Also has a brand new JT chain on it that I'm gonna need. Uh, R2R billet kicker. Uh, what else? I got a little billet uh, oil fill plug. Um, some fat bars, ODI lock-ons, ASV levers, AC bumper, AC, yeah, AC bumper, AC grab bar. I always get those two mixed up for some reason. Um, stainless steel braided brake lines, the individual set, one line individually to each caliper. Uh, that's about it as far as how the bike is. Some of the stuff didn't come on it. Stuff that I put on it are the foot pegs, the kicker, uh, the mod quad stator cover, ESR reeds, the wheels and tires. Um, tires are XC rippers, also by Team Alba Racing. Uh, I put the grab bar and bumper on, I put the GPI rad on, I put the steering stem on, the clamp, the bar risers. Uh, that's about it that I changed on it. So you guys already seen the frame. So here's some of the parts that we're going to. Obviously I'm going to keep the TRX-5B pipe and silencer by ESR. Uh, I got four works hood, four works gas tank cover. Here's our mirror gloss black swing arm. Here's the caliper I rebuilt. I actually did a video on that, rebuilding it and recoding it. Um, I believe that's a BDT, um, anodized red brake stay. Uh, I got some red chain slides and rollers. We got the Delrin bushings for the swing arm. Brand new OEM Honda pivot bolt. Uh, I got a bunch of spring options here for the exhaust. Here's the motor mounts that were also powder coated by Bonehead. Um, I powder coated the seat bracket. This is a aluminum um, uh, rear seat bracket with the pins instead of the traditional lock style. I have an extra um, rear shock linkage that I'm going to rebuild with a rebuild kit, new bearings and everything in it. Mod quad brake pedal, ESR water pump that I got from my buddy Costantino's. Cost, what's up bro? Um, and I also have blue silicone hoses in case I want to go that route with color. Uh, we have a couple other things. Uh, here's the Meyer white plastics race cut with the scoop for uh, when I put the um, four works hood on. Here's the two different color schemes. Obviously, the red, white, and blue will go on the white. And then I have black and red set up identical for the black plastics since the quad's basically all black and red. Other than if I run the white plastics, obviously, it'll have those. Here's our gas tank. We are going to a CFM Performance aluminum airbox with an 89 intake tube with the little, uh, I guess you would call it a burp bottle on the intake there. So that's off 88, 89, I believe, or maybe it just came on 89. I'm not 100% sure, but it's definitely 88 or 89. Um, we'll go swap right out. There's some other like loose stuff in here, like a water pump rebuild. I got my steering stem bearings in there, new steering stem bushing, even though the one that's on the quad is new. Um, you know, we didn't really, I think I wrote it once after I put the stem in there and then I decided to, uh, why did, why did I stop riding this quad? I, uh, I think I took the water pump. No, I went to switch a couple bolts out and I went to use some of those, uh, anodized aluminum bolts, like in the drain bolt for the water pump cover snap right off. So I'm like, you know, and I just got pissed off and put it in the shed. So that's basically what happened there. 
That is my trash can rolling towards my quad. Um, all right, I'm gonna clean all this back up now, and I'm going to I'm gonna disassemble the 250R myself. Uh, if you guys want to know how to disassemble one of those, I have an older video completely stripping one down to the frame, uh, which was actually this frame. A little fun fact. So I'm gonna do that off camera. I'm gonna get all organized, and then when we pick up, we'll be when we start putting this back together. Uh, other things I got to do off camera. I'm gonna powder coat those A arms. And I'm going to get my linkage ready. Um, this part of the linkage is aluminum. This part is steel. So I'm going to leave this polished. And I'm going to powder coat this mirror gloss black to match all the other stuff that's on the quad. So see you guys in two seconds for you. A couple days for me. Stay tuned. All right. Maybe not a couple days. Today is still the same day. It's like, I don't know, four hours later. Got a little bit ahead of myself, and then I'm like, oh shit, I'm supposed to film putting this stuff in. Um, so I figured I'd jump in real quick, give you guys an update, and let you know what's going on here. So I put the Delrin bushings in the new powder-coated swing arm. That It was simple, man. Just a C-clamp or a bench vise. You line them up, push them in. It's done. Um, I put the swing arm with the uh, swing arm chain slide on. Uh, found a couple more parts that I forgot to lay out, you know, little, little stuff. Um, yeah, I'll just show you. This is what we got going on. I got the bike down to what you see here. Uh, I'm going to leave the front end on with the steering stem connected, um, as long as I can. This way I can move it around because I don't know if you guys ever moved a quad around with the tie rods off of it. Uh, it's not fun. Um, I don't plan on using this Lone Star axle. I have a DuraBlue, which I rather use so uh, i'm a little up in the air about that yet i never ordered an antifade and i'm kind of not wanting to put this together with with that but i mean i will for now it's no big deal i could change it back out later um what else do i do i got the radiator out uh, i got the wire harness out i took the wire harness and re i took all the old electrical tape off of it and rewrapped it uh, I took the airbox out, carbs off, or while well, it's hanging on the handlebars here. I'm going to leave it all as like one piece. Um, I got to take the bumper, the grab bar off still, and then I'm going to pull the engine. I got to take that front piece of the exhaust off. This piece of the spring broke off on me out in the trail one day. Um, I think when I power shifted it from third to fourth when I first got this bike, and it literally blew the old chain in like... A ton of pieces there's actually a short on my video with me stuck out in the woods that day uh, i'm about to pull the engine out of here and i'm really noticing i got a lot more work than i think i do because it's not going back in here looking like this i'm probably going to refinish the the cases and i'm also going to power coat the clutch cover till i order my new two-piece mod quad one with the removable clutch portion which is cool because I haven't taken this off yet and I want to see what type of clutch baskets in it. I'm assuming with all this other stuff on it and the money that the previous owner spent on this, whenever it was built, I'm assuming more than 10 years ago, um, those PSI top ends are, you know, you can't get those anymore. So haven't done too much research. Really doesn't matter. Don't really care. Uh, yeah, so I got a lot more work than I think I got to do. So um, like, you know, these things for the radiator shrouds, or I'm sorry, radiator shrouds. Uh, I'm going to do those black. Oh, they can't go on there, just all scratched up and stuff like that. I'm also going to run the OEM uh, fender mounts instead of having the, the bolt through the side of the um, Meyer plastics, which is like a dead giveaway from 50 feet away that they're Meyers and not OEM. Not that I'm trying to fool anybody, but I'd rather not have a bolt right in the middle of the graphics. So this is where I got to so far. I put the swing arm on, like I said, my slider. And, you know, got my rubbers on here, the seat bushings, the rear latch bushings, uh, the radiator is in there. Why I'm uh, accentuating radiators because I'm from New Jersey and we say it as radiator. One of you guys don't like that. Not that I really care if you like it or not, but it's just, uh, I look at it like an inside joke. So if you're watching, haha. <laughs> anyway, all right, that's where I'm at, guys. Took my foot pegs off, hoses. I'm going to continue stripping that down and try to refrain myself from just getting all excited and bolt stuff on trying to get done. So, see you soon. It's like about two days later. Uh, I had a couple other things to do. Um, sorry, guys, this video is not a how-to. Uh, I was going to do this on my own time without filming, but, you know, I'm just basically just showing you guys what's going on in the garage this week. 
um, while the 350X frames out for powder coat. Um, if you're wondering why I'm not powder coating that myself yet, my sandblaster is not large enough to sandblast that frame, and I did not build my larger oven yet. So a frame is really the only thing I can't powder coat yet. But, you know, one of these days I'll build my oven and, you know, I got a little junk metal shed that I was going to turn into like a sandblasting room. So I'll probably be doing that soon too. As of right now, it's just storage for, there's probably 40 sets of plastics in it and all kinds of other stuff. I think my lawnmower is in there somewhere too, but you can't see it as of right now. But let me show you where I'm at. I got to take the day and strip some stuff and power coat some stuff and get it ready for reassembly. So that's where we'll pick up in the next scene. But here's where I'm at at this moment. Here's a 330 as we sit or 250R, however you want to call it. Um, got my A-arms off. So this is where we're at. I'm really debating. I like the black plastics on there. I should have bought brand new black ones. Um, these rear ones, somebody cut the lower section in front of the tire there to accommodate the Nerf bars that used to be on this quad. I think it had uh, Team Alba uh, Pro Elite Nerf bars. But, you know, they, they should, you see how they're cut like that? They should be full like that. Not a huge deal. They kind of did it clean and even. I could probably make it a little bit better. But, you know, I'd like to have an option to run black or white plastics. I also have the red. I have a set of full fender reds, uh, red plastics, uh, OEM rears, so 88 OEM rears, and I have a set of aftermarket full fender fronts, the three-piece, so left fender, right fender hood. Um, I do like the way red plastics look with the black four works carbon fiber hood. I think it's just a classic look. So I'll probably order another set of reds since I don't want to run the OEM rear fenders because they're pretty friggin' expensive nowadays for these, just like everything else, man. So, all right, that's where I'm at, guys. I'm going to get powder coating, and we'll pick back up after I have all this stuff prepped, and we'll slap this thing together, man. Keep watching if you still are. And be sure to throw me a thumbs up if you're still here, because you obviously like what's going on. And subscribe if you haven't. It's a few days later, and as in a few days, about five to seven days later, I've been cranking, just getting stuff recoded, refinished, uh, making smaller videos um, as I go. Uh, just basically, you know, search based videos for people that might be doing a similar procedure. So I might as well film it while I'm doing it. Um, this is where I'm at so far, guys. We're sitting pretty much in the same position because I've been super busy uh, redoing stuff. So the rear shock, I finally got my vapor blaster working good, man. Check this out, guys. I'm making a video actually rebuilding this rear master cylinder. And I'm also going to show how I got it from looking like that. To looking like that so making a bunch of little videos if you haven't seen them yet be sure to check them out uh, also came across a bunch of other like little stuff that i had to order so i tackled some of that there's a few things that i want to do differently with the quad so the 250r knuckles and front calipers they're in perfect work working shape and everything like that i have a set of 0405 trx 450r knuckles calipers uh, everything to swap it out to the newer 450R setup, plus the 450R setup is all aluminum. The 250R knuckles are like cast steel or really heavy. So um, other things I've been doing, I got the A-arms off the quad. This one is the last one that I did not sandblast yet. This one is halfway sandblasted, and I did the upper A-arms already, and I also got the full upgraded teflon heim joint rebuild kit from full flight racing so check out the powder coat man i'm really uh, i'm really starting to figure this stuff out and get it good so here's the uppers ready to rock they're a little dusty from sitting in a garage because i've been working like a madman trying to get caught up well i mean look even the boots are red man it's just gonna it's gonna look sick i even got the newer upgraded full flight uh stickers that go on the lower a arms both of the uppers are completely done. I ordered a new wave rotor for the rear of the 250R, and I also got rotors for the 450R front hubs. Next thing I'm going to order, I don't know if we'll have it in time. I might have to just put it together with the 250R stuff, but I'm going to order uh, LSR, so Lone Star Racing, rear aluminum hubs, like the ones I have on the 465EX. And I'm also going to order the LSR front hubs for the 0405 450R, to match the 450R stuff. So those are like 250 for both rear and 250 for both front. So I'm probably gonna order those 
uh, this weekend when I'm filming this now, you guys probably won't see this video for like another week or two, but just going through everything, man. It wasn't as easy as just unbolt it from that quad and bolt it on this quad. So let me get back to work and then I'll see you guys in the next scene, wherever and whenever that might be. Before I get back to doing stuff, man, I, uh, the rear shock, both of them, I had two to choose from. They were both pretty much looking like this. This one, the spring is in pretty nice shape, the blue. So instead of stripping that one and redoing it, I'm going to leave this original. And I took the spring off of this one, which was a hell of a fight. And the blue was all like chipped off of it and everything, the coating. So I sandblasted that. That's just about to come out of the oven. I decided to go black until, until I order my Elkas for this quad. I'm going to get both front and the rear for this bike. So for now, w when we're done, till I do get my Elkas, even if I ordered them today, they're like a five, six week waiting period. So that'll just be a, a nice... Uh, you know, I want to ride the quad for a little bit with the stock shocks, and then we'll, you know, do a video on the comparison and how much different it feels going to some really nice aftermarket shocks like Elka's. Probably going to do the Stage 3 uh, Legacies. I'd like to do the Stage 5 fronts and the Stage 4 rear, but I don't motocross or XC race, guys. I'm a, I'm a you know, I'm a recreational rider, weekend warrior, whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah, it'd be nice to be like, yeah, it's got fives on it, but... I don't see the point in spending three to thirty five hundred dollars for shocks when I can get something that will be more than I need for fifteen, sixteen hundred. You know what I mean? So yeah, it'd be nice. But there's it, this is not the only build I got going on. We got this, the three fifty X. Uh the two hundred X is gonna be coming up. My LT two fifty R I'm probably gonna redo this winter coming up. Um the four sixty five ain't done. Uh, there's just so much stuff that's gotta get done and parts that gotta get ordered, and this shit is not cheap, man. It's not cheap. This shit's more expensive than a damn drug habit. So, you know, you just got something to show for it after you spend your money. So, anyway, all right. I just wanted to show you guys that spring real quick. But, all right, I'll see you guys whenever we pick back up when some more parts come in that I need. All right, man, we're moving right along here, guys. Uh, it's a couple days later. I had to order a few parts. Um, some of them came in. I got my new uh, the front sprocket. I'm waiting on the rear sprocket to come in. Um, supposedly it got shipped to the wrong address, says the eBay seller. Only after I asked about it. So, makes me feel real comfortable. But anyway, supposedly there's another one on the way now. FedEx two or three day overnight, which two or three days isn't overnight shipping. But anyway, um, let's see, what did we get in? Uh, I powder coated the, I don't know if I showed you guys these yet, I powder coated the rear hubs and then uh, I decided to go a different route on the front end. I had a 0405 450R front end sitting around so um, went ahead and vapor blasted the knuckles. I got some new brake rotors um, and I also got billet hubs for the front and I got billet hubs for the rear I have all of my A-arms but one powder coated um, the, the powder coating in full flight uses some pretty durable shit man it's it takes quite a little while to get it all sandblasted off and ready for powder coat with the setup that I have now but I got half of the front end on I'll bolt the other half on with you guys after I powder coat the last arm but yo check this out man I'm getting getting really excited here with this it's really starting to come together um, and I gotta figure out what I want to do with these shocks and if I want to either a clean up the engine or B um, I mean it's clean but you know it could use a couple things to be recoded but I'm planning on getting a set of billet cases for this by mod quad and um, I'm probably going to get the removable clutch cover too. So it's kind of a tough call. Do I make this, do I draw this out and make this take even way longer and have to buy more stuff just to doll it up for now? Um, or just send it because it ain't that bad really and um, get this over with so I could be riding this thing because I'm dying to ride this quad again. But uh, here's the front end, man. Check this out. Looks, uh, looks freaking killer, man. So here's all this, man. All fresh powder coat i got the new stickers from full flight for their a arms that are on here there's that vapor blasted uh 450r spindle or knuckle whatever you want to call it just so happens i got the ball joints with the red boots with the rebuild kit so <laughs> really just flows super nice 
There's that aluminum Lone Star hub on the front. I got the one set up on the rear here. I tried cleaning this axle up, man. It's it's pretty difficult. I think that's about as clean as it's gonna get, but I got the new Dura Blue sticker on there. Here's the rear hub. It's really uh really coming together, man. I um uh, got a typhoon rotor for the rear, powder coated the rotor hub, got new all new hardware for the axle for now i'm probably going to get a double locking axle nut uh eventually and you know but like i said i just want to get this thing going i vapor blasted the rear shock powder coated the spring mirror gloss black reservoirs all cleaned up put a heat shielding on the uh the line there rear master cylinders vapor blasted fully rebuilt ready to go anodized red clevis at the bottom Got the brake pedal on there, foot pegs are on, like you guys seen. So, the engine, you guys seen the engine, I'm probably going to pull the clutch cover off and powder coat that mirror gloss black. I got a, um, I was going to run that blue ESR water pump cover, but I ended up getting this uh, NPM, Nelson Precision, water pump cover. This one here, I am waiting for the new um, barbs for the... Um, coolant lines to come in. I got the uh, billet machined ones, so I'm going to pull those out. Um, this is going to stay, obviously, like that. And this and the clutch cover is going to go mirror gloss black. I was going to, I don't know, I guess tape stuff off and recoat where this is rubbed off a little bit, but really ain't that big of a deal, man. So, you know, I'm probably just going to go ahead and bolt this engine in now. It's there's really nothing to it, man. I'm just going to do it off camera, and then I'll pick up with you guys. Um, you know, it's just a lower bolt. You got the front motor mount plates that are also powder coated. Um, I got my billet exhaust clamps, or um, the stays, whatever you want to call them. Um, cleaned up whatever bolts didn't come with the Nickel Works kit. So I'm going to go ahead and lay the engine in there now. I also put new lines on the carburetor got that all taken care of and i vapor blasted the carb you guys will see it better when it's out of the bag i'm just keeping it in here because you know there's been a lot of dust flying around in the garage with all the sandblasting and everything i've been doing um i don't know if you guys seen yet if you're just seeing this video for the first time but i did a video rebuilding the shock linkage for this bike um i did a video rebuild um rebuilding the rear brake master cylinder for this bike i also did a video on how i built my vapor blasting cabinet for under 350 bucks getting great results out of that thing but all right let me uh let me lay the engine in this thing and then we'll pick back up and i'm gonna go ahead and powder coat this other a-arm and get that set up because i could damn near put this thing on wheels so i gotta put the linkage on still that's no big deal it's only three bolts and uh yeah, man, we're moving right along. Uh, I'm still up in the air on what color plastics I'm going to run. Like I said, I have the red plastics. They're full fenders. I have black plastics, race cut, and I have brand new white plastics that are race cut. The black ones I'm kind of leaning towards with the red graphics kit on it. It's going to look really sick with the brand new floor work seat that I recovered. Um, I think it's just going to look great. So probably going to go that route they are used so i'm going to have to do my restoration thing once again this is just what's taking this forever you know keep uh putting stuff on and just not happy with it so i you know make it look new just, you know that's the part i like but you know this was supposed to be a quick project not a two three week project um the front shocks so these are shocks off of an 88 trx 250r red spring 86 87 is the blue spring Kind of crazy, they went to less coils in the 88, 89, 86 has, you know, more coils on the spring there. I was going to pull these apart and powder coat those two. I'm literally just going to send it looking like this with the shocks because I'm going to buy new shocks. So I'm going to buy some Elka Stage 3 Plus, the, the Legacy Series, the, the Plus ones though, the ones that have a couple extra things. So really no point in tearing those down and i'd rather leave them with the original finished i think they're worth more that way in case i decide to resell them after i'm done with them and uh yeah all right let me keep bolting stuff on and we'll pick back up i went ahead and opted for the effort and just send that shit man we pulled this thing out and i swapped the cases we'll do all that extra little stuff man there's no sense breaking all these gaskets and everything you know 
damn springtime, man. We need to get this thing out there running. Just ripping through the trails. Wide open. Run this thing up against the 330. Or, yeah. Yeah, I'm beat, guys. I've been, like, pulling crazy hours in here. Getting all this stuff cleaned. Vapor blasted. Powder coated. Disassembled. Reassembled. Rebuilt. Going nuts, man. Spending a lot of money, too, on all this extra stuff that I wanted to get. Like, these billet hubs, front and rear, and... All the other stuff that goes along with swapping over to the 450R stuff, you know, new brake pads, rebuild the calipers. Actually, no, I'm not going to rebuild the calipers. They still work fine. So, I have plenty of sets of them anyway. If one's, something's wrong with one of them, I'll just swap it out. But uh, I got our vapor blast the calipers and uh, got the engine sitting in there now. So, what else we got? We got to wire it up. I got to throw the carb on. I got to put my rad lines back on. Um, I gotta take down some of the powder coat, uh, where it touches the frame for grounding. I usually like to run an extra ground wire anyway, like directly from where it's going to hit the chassis to the engine. So I'll probably run something like, where is it? Something like this here for a ground wire. I think I have a thinner one though. That's a little bit overkill, but yeah. All right. So Next thing, I gotta put my linkage on, and I'm just dreading finishing the vapor blasting on that other A-arm because it's just a pain in the ass. Uh, I'm probably gonna, while I have everything out, clean up those OEM 250R front hubs and everything and just have those on the shelf. Because as you know, we have that extra frame now. So, yeah, we'll be building another one of these. Probably, probably after the winter, next winter, you know, after we do my LT250R over. I'm sure that thing will probably need a refresh by the winter time, so. Alright guys, I'm friggin' beat, but I'm gonna keep going a little bit, and we'll pick back up after, after I get that other arm powder coated, and we get this thing down on wheels. And we run into a little problem. So, those front Lone Star hubs that I ordered, um, when they go on the spindles, and I ordered them for an 0405 TRX 450R, I have 0405 TRX 450R knuckles or spindles, whatever you want to call them, and obviously the corresponding calipers to go with those years, 0405. Um, the spacing where the rotor is supposed to meet up with the brake caliper is off by like a half inch. So I'm going to, instead of making this take longer, I have a set of 400EX spindles, um, another set of Lone Star billet hubs, with nice rotors on it. So I'm going to do a 400EX setup and I'm going to use YFZ450 dual piston front calipers, not Chinese knockoff ones. I have like OEM Nissan calipers. So, you know, we're not putting Chinese shit on this. So that's a problem I ran into. So now I got to go steal them off one of my 400EXs and uh, I'll just use that stuff. And because that quad's going to go, um, the 400EX is going to get uh, OEM equipment back on it. So I'll just be sending those back and getting my $250 back for those. Also, they showed up damaged, man. So whoever the shipper was sent these things just, which one is it? Sent these things loose in a box. Um, two aluminum hubs, just like they were in like a, a Ziploc bag inside the box, but the box was enough to fit three sets of these in. So they just get banged around the whole time, but let me show you guys how messed up this is. And I'll tell you what the seller said to me, too. So, well, if you guys know me enough, man, I'm not putting that shit on my quad, bro. I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not putting it on there, you know? For a brand new item, so it's listed as on eBay, I think it was like $239. I, um, I contacted the seller. I said, yo, man. Uh, being that these were shipped loose in here, they were all banging into each other and got all chipped and marred up. He's like, oh, just install them. They'll work fine. I'm not saying that they won't work fine. I'm saying that I bought brand new parts that aren't cheap, you know, 250 bucks for two front hubs. Like, I could have spent that money elsewhere on the bike. You know, I didn't really need them. Um, yeah, I could put them in the lathe and probably clean them up a little bit, but that's not the point. He didn't offer me a partial refund, nothing. He just said, ah, just clean them up and install them. It'll work fine. No, here's, I want a return label. So these are going back to him, and I'll just use the ones that I already had, like I should have in the first place, and uh, we'll get going. The knuckles that I have for 400EX, they are already coated black, so I'm going to blast that off and vapor blast them because I really like the way that that's looking 
with everything all up in the front all clean aluminum vapor blasted and or billet so you know these will just go back on the shelf or you know i have stock 450r hubs i could have put on there but you know now we're going billet everywhere so shit's got to match so now i gotta go rob one of my other quads that isn't going to be used anytime soon anyway so it's all the way back in the storage container but um yeah it's the 465 if you guys know what i'm talking about so I don't know. We'll get back to that quad one of these days. I Man, I just lost all interest in that thing. So, you know, I'm a two-stroke guy, you know. But, I don't know. If I start to part it out, I'll let you guys know. The engine is available on eBay. So, I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of the chassis. I'll probably keep it for a hybrid build or something. Because everything on there is all Lone Star. Every single thing on it. Be a cool thing to start with with a hybrid. Maybe like a CRF450 engine. Fuel-injected one. I think that sounds about right. All right. Let me go rob my own... I'm going to go rob myself and then get back to this. All right, so crisis averted, guys. I got the 400X spindles on there. Here's the uh, YFZ450 calipers on there. And these are OEM. There's your little Nissan mark there. Um, I think I have a set of new brake pads. These are still like 70 80% life on them, though, so I'll probably just leave them for now. I uh, kind of like the, the spindle knuckle black, man. I kind of think that looks all right. Might just leave it like that for now, considering I put a bunch of work into getting those done. Um, let's see here. I took the 250R thumb throttle off because that is looking a little sad. So I have another thumb throttle that I built out with a mod quad thumb throttle and a billet cover and all that stuff. So that's what we'll be running. I bolted my carb on. Here's what that looks like. All fresh vapor blasted, nice and cleaned up. All new lines on there. Um, I got to throw my vent line on for the case, run that with these, back through the little clip that's on the uh, rear motor mount bracket, wrapped the stator wires in a DEI heat shielding, let's clean that up a little bit, I got my clutch cable hooked up, and I finally stopped dragging my feet, and I got five more minutes and then I'm pulling this puppy out. I'll tell you what, man, I know it feels good to drop stuff off to the powder coater, there's no better feeling than picking up fresh powder coated parts except one feeling doing it yourself and getting damn good results man i keep looking at these a-arms you guys let me know man how do you think i did on this yeah they're a little dusty from being in the garage obviously but i mean look at that finish on there man that is i'm so pleased with that it's almost going to be a damn shame to go rip this thing through a mud hole <laughs> day one but that's what that's what i build these things for you know what i mean um another thing i'm contemplating it's Dura Blue Axle. I'm not pleased with it. So, I have a Lone Star Excalibur for a 250R um, out in the shed. So, I might swap that out to the Chrome Lone Star one. It gets in a little better shape than that. I really don't feel like buying another new axle for this thing, being I have so many here. Um, it's going to get beat to shit anyway. You know what I mean? But this Dura Blue, I, I might swap back to this later. I'm going to have to order another Dura Blue sticker. I shouldn't have put that on yet. I kind of jumped the gun. Um, I think I can get it cleaner than that. Even though it's kind of a kind of a pain in the ass. This side I got decently clean. You know? Just for a quick quick uh, scrub down. But it's like, this axle is like... I don't know if I get you guys a shot. It's like... I don't know if you can see that. It's like textured. Like you can see like the millet or the lathe marks in it. From Dura Blue. So all that stuff just like built up in them little grooves and everything um i mean i even cleaned up the cleaned up the clip rings and everything lock rings whatever you want to say and um yeah so i don't know might go grab that and swap that out it's not like fully installed anyway so it ain't gonna take long so i'm gonna make that decision we'll pick back up after the last a-arm cools off and start bolting those on and then we'll pick back up man all right, guys, it's the next day. Um, I know I said I was going to try and do this all in one video. Uh, came across a lot more stuff I got to order. Got the quad sitting pretty damn good. Got it sitting pretty right. Um, I can put it on wheels here in a few minutes, which I'm going to do. So this is where I want to end this video, guys. Um, so a two-part series is not bad for everything we did here yes i tried to do it in one but 
my, uh, I guess, obsessive compulsive, or maybe a nicer way to say it, attention to detail is really bothering me. Um, so I went on Rocky Mountain, not sponsored. I ordered the new motor mount bolt for here, the new bolt for underneath, the two bolts for the back. Um, I ordered all new bolts for the linkage. I ordered new grease zerks for the um, linkage because the ones I have won't fit. Um, I ordered a bunch of little stuff. I had all these OEM Honda, the bolts and the nuts for there. My sprocket finally came in. And I ordered a set of shocks for the front for now. Didn't really feel like spending 1600 bucks right now. You know, spent a lot more than I thought I was going to spend on this quad to get it to where I can go ride it. Um, so in the next part of this, the second and final part of this, um, we'll... we'll drop this thing down on the ground what i need to ask you guys is i can't make my mind up man so let me explain to you what we got i got the black carbon fiber um gas tank cover i also have the hood in black carbon fiber okay now i do have an oem red one in very nice shape which would match the red seat and flow good and i also have a brand new four works carbon fiber hood in red carbon fiber so follow what i'm saying here all black plastics with the black hood um black gas tank cover and that seat which you know i, I have another seat so i could order another cover which i probably will um or the white plastics with the black and black or the black with the red hood or should i get red plastics which would look killer i think with the black carbon fiber hood and the black gas tank um you guys let me know, man. And just for making this two videos instead of one, like I said I would make it one, I was trying to, um, believe me, I got a case of Bell Ray, I got all my HP2, I got cases of stuff ready to go. Whoever goes on Facebook and shares the most of my videos on Facebook and tags me in it, Garage MC Matt, is going to win 100 bucks. I'll pick the winner. It's going to be whoever shares the most videos and tags me in each and every share. I'll see you guys in part two. Thanks for joining me. Video's almost over. Smash the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, that's cool. Maybe I didn't earn your subscription yet, but I will. So keep watching, and I'll see you guys in the garage next time. Peace.